Hi, this is Tech with Costa and I'm sharing my engineering journey. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Windows Subsystem for Linux or WSL. This approach is great to work on coding projects, including data engineering. Just a quick recap, in the previous video, we introduced the data engineering Zoom camp and I've shown you the essential steps to start the course. Before actually starting the course, I formatted my desktop computer, I upgraded Windows 10 to 11. In the end, I've optimized the operating system for productivity. I might create some videos about this in the future. In terms of operating system setups, you can either run Windows 10 or Windows 11, as I'm doing. If you want to do this on Linux and you are a beginner, I recommend you Ubuntu or Mint Cinnamon. If you are an intermediate user and you want to be on Linux, I recommend Debian 12 Bookworm. And of course, you can also do it on macOS, but I will be focusing more on Windows and Linux. And in the end, there's also a possibility to use a virtual machine or VM locally or in the cloud. Now I'm going to show you what I'm actually running. To check the current operating system version, let's open the start menu and search for system information. And here you can see the OS name and also the version. If you are on Windows 10 and you don't want to upgrade to Windows 11, it's fine because everything I'm doing for 11 should apply directly to Windows 10. So the goal here is to use Windows 11 or Windows 10 running Ubuntu 22.04 on WSL. For me, this is the best of both worlds. All right, but what exactly is WSL? Windows Subsystem for Linux, or WSL, is a compatibility layer in Windows that allows you to run a Linux distribution alongside your regular Windows environment. It enables you to use Linux command line tools and run Linux applications directly on your Windows machine, bridging the gap between the two operating systems. It's a powerful tool for developers who want the best of both worlds without the need for dual booting or virtual machines. Using WSL for data engineering projects allows developers to leverage a Linux environment on a Windows machine. Many data engineering tools and frameworks are designed and optimized for Linux, making WSL a convenient solution for seamless integration and compatibility with the broader data engineering ecosystem. Let's install WSL2. To do that, open the Start menu, search for Turn Windows Features On or Off, activate Virtual Machine Platform and Windows Subsystem for Linux. Click OK. Now save your work and restart the computer. After rebooting the machine, it's time to install WSL. Before that, let's open File Explorer. And here you can see that a new folder has been created, Linux. This folder is empty because we didn't install any Linux distributions yet. To do that, let's go to the Start menu and search for CMD or Command Prompt. It should be possible to install WSL with Microsoft Store or PowerShell, but I've experienced problems with PowerShell in the past, so this time I'm going to use Command Prompt. Let's start by typing WSL. WSL has no installed distributions. Let's actually install WSL by running WSL dash dash update. Click Yes, installing WSL. WSL has been installed. Then let's check the current version. WSL dash dash version. It's 2.0.9.0. I want to update it again. To do that, let's press the up arrow in the keyboard to go through the command history and find the previous update command. Enter, click yes, and it found a new update, version 2.0.14. Let's confirm that. WSL dash dash version and update it correctly. Just to confirm again, let's run update once more and we have the most recent version. That's great. Now let's run WSL list to see if we have distributions installed. We don't, but we can check what are the distributions available online by running WSL dash dash list dash dash online. These are the ones that are available. Let's go to the browser and search for Ubuntu releases, releases Ubuntu wiki, and in bold, we can find the latest stable version for Ubuntu, version 22.04.3. This is the one I'm going to install. To install this version, let's run WSL dash dash install dash D. And now we need to use exactly the same name that appears here. So Ubuntu with capital U dash 22.04, enter. And it's installing this version of Ubuntu. Now it's asking for a Unix username. I will type Costa. You can type whatever you want. Then a new password. On Linux Bash, when you type a password, what you are typing will not show up, but it's actually recording it. So just type it. Then hit enter. Retype the same thing. Hit enter. 
and the operation completed successfully. Installation was successful and now we are already inside the Linux distro and we can see that the first name that appears on the bash is my username, the one I defined, and the second one is the name of my machine. If you want to rename your machine, you can go to the start menu and type rename your PC, then rename this PC and just update that. I do not want to do that. Now we can see what files are in the home folder, ls to list them, it's empty, but if we go to the root directory, cd forward slash ls again, we can see the folders there. Now if we go back to the file explorer, click on the Linux folder, we see the Ubuntu folder, let's open that and you can see the same root folder as we saw in the bash. Another way of opening WSL is by going to start menu and search for WSL, WSL app, and this will open exactly the same bash. Now we want to open a terminal, start menu and search for terminal. This is a Windows app that enables you to have multiple terminals in the same window. Let's pin this to taskbar, we are going to use this often. By the way, if you are on Windows 10, you can also use this terminal, but you need to go to Microsoft Store, search for Terminal, download and install this one, Windows Terminal. Make sure it's the one created by Microsoft Corporation. By default, Terminal starts up with Windows PowerShell, but if we click here, we can actually start a Ubuntu Terminal or Bash. We also have access to Ubuntu through Terminal. Now let's click the arrow again, Settings, Default Profile, Let's put it on Ubuntu 22.04.3, save, close the terminal, open the terminal again, and now it's by default opening on Ubuntu. To confirm the Ubuntu version, let's run lsp underscore release space dash a, and indeed we are running Ubuntu 22.04.3, codename Yami. Now we can clear the bash using Control L, Let's update Ubuntu by running sudo apt update password, type the password. Then let's actually upgrade these updates, sudo apt upgrade, enter, type y, and it's updating, done. We can also access WSL through PowerShell or command prompt. Let's open command prompt, WSL, and it opens. Exit, let's open PowerShell, WSL, and also opens. Just to confirm that we are running WSL2 instead of WSL1, let's run WSL dash dash status, and we are running Ubuntu 2204, and default version is WSL2. Let me just explain the difference between WSL1 and WSL2. WSL1 uses a translation layer to convert Linux system calls into Windows equivalents. It provides good compatibility, but may have some performance limitations. WSL2 uses a virtual machine to run a full Linux kernel alongside the Windows kernel. This provides better performance and improved compatibility for certain tasks. If you are running by default WSL1 instead of WSL2, follow this guide by Microsoft, I will link that in the description. So now we have a Windows machine running Linux. In the following videos we are going to talk about Git, GitHub and VS Code. I hope to see you there.